God is good. The presence of God. So that should be a topic, though I will mention marriage. Declare the presence of God. I was thinking about uh, when we are preparing for the, for the service today. And uh, one question was in my heart. What is the greatest thing we need for a successful marriage? And number two, what do we need to break the curse that has been upon marriage? And there are many things, but chief among them is the presence of God. The presence of God. So many things are needed, but chief among them is the presence of God. So as we are preparing, that is what God put so much and so heavily in my heart, the need for more of God in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. So I believe that the first place where I should start is where this service came from. Where was this service born? God is good. The foundation of this service. And I will give you a short story. So this story, you don't need to write it. You can just listen to this story. Blessed be the name of the Father. We, I come from a family where we've never experienced divorce. So my family or separation or somebody gets married and comes back. So in my family, we have never experienced that. But we've been clobbered in another area. Poverty has been there seriously. Serious one. Hallelujah. Alcoholism has been a serious problem. Now, from the family where I was, my father was an alcoholic, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, they were all alcoholic. So that was a problem that I was born into. But now, from the side of my wife, there was trouble. My wife comes from a family where the grandmother divorced with the grandfather because of a problem of unfaithfulness. Now the mother also divorced with the father. So when it came to us, we lived well for seven years. We've, we've lived well until today. I'm just getting you the message. So when we got to the seventh year, the Lord spoke to me that if you survive this year, that is when you can count that you have a marriage. And I, hey, that was an alarm. So what is the problem here? So God took me back to the history on my wife's side because my father-in-law is a pastor. So it does not mean that being a pastor or a prophet is guarantee. So when it was at that point, so we, I started to pray. And I started to pray about this thing. And let me tell you, you see us preaching here and praying for you and you get breakthroughs, but let me tell you the things that we have to overcome are not small. Now, as we went towards the end of 2022, there was an acceleration of attack that was focused on destroying the marriage. I've learned things during the last four months. God is good. So we had our anniversary on 9th this past week. So we got to the eighth year successfully. Say my amen. Hallelujah. So two weeks ago when I was mentioning this service, I told you there's something I will tell you, but not now. I will tell you later. Because those two final weeks, my heart was shaking like nobody's business. Because God Almighty, we need to get to ninth. <laughs> we need to get, we, we really got, I tell you, I woke up on ninth and I went and bought flowers for the first time in my life. I bought flowers and I found them selling flowers for 250 
roses there at Nivers. I told them this 250 is small, give me that, or combine two of them. I said this is still too small, still combine them again. Sasa shida ilikuwa ni kutoka supermarket kushuka chini. A man carrying flowers. <laughs> I think everybody I met on the way I gave 50 bob to confuse them not to look at me. <laughs> but you know, it was no ordinary flower. It was a celebration that a curse has been broken. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because this line of the seventh year, because it happened that way in my, my in-laws, the seventh year getting to the eighth, hmm, and my wife lived a, a terrible life a, a terrible, terrible life because of that. So the celebration was that the curse is broken. And now I trust God that my children will live a different life in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. But let me tell you, I have seen what you call attack with my eyes. I was meditating upon Joseph. And the Bible says that Joseph was even approached by Potiphar's wife. And I was thinking, I was trying to look at it realistically. And say, this situation that even the cloth of Joseph remained in the hands of Potiphar's wife could be that woman was even breathing in the ears of Joseph. <laughs> the temptation that that man could have gone through, maybe, I think if you've watched the movie, if you've watched the movie Joseph, I think you saw the, the, the temptation, the way they put it, that Joseph, Joseph was in a swimming pool, and this lady comes to touch Joseph. Hey, and you know, a man, 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 you know, men say amen. <laughs> if it comes to a place where they have bodily contact, we need Jesus Christ himself to come, not to send anybody. Akuje pekeake. And let me tell you, I, I pray for you, and I'm very sensitive to how I handle these issues. Because the attack that was sent my way was super complicated. They sent me people from here and from outside the country. They sent me the masters they sent me masters of the dark world. They sent my way women that look too good to be even in the magazine. Zebulon does not know that. <laughs> you know, everything that was a temptation in my previous life was sent as a temptation. So God warned us both. God warned my wife. God warned me. On 2nd January, when I knew that we were in the final phase, I took the hand of my wife and I took her to the other women of the church, the women prayer warriors, and we sat down and we talked and we told them, my people, we are in temptation. We are good, we love each other, nothing is wrong. But a line has been drawn on us. We need to pray. There are things we don't know. <laughs> we need to pray. Pray for us. And you know, I have a lady who fasted for 40 days. And people, the women made a prayer chain from January, and it is still continuing. <laughs> God is good. There are battles that if you don't, you know, there are battles that if you don't find serious, you fail. This country, I've been telling you the past few weeks, that this country eats its own preachers. And the biggest have been turned into bread by women. Those who would have been greater than Idahosa were, fall, were made to fall by women. Leave alone, when Idahosa came, ask the history of Christianity in Kenya in the 1970s. Where you hear people went to crusade in Okambani and they command demons to go on trees. Mapepo tokeni mwende kwa miti. And the trees bent. <laughs> and the trees bend and they tell the people that you need to accept Jesus Christ or these demons are coming, you see and everybody rushed forward to receive Jesus Christ but you hear those people are still alive but the move of God died what about 
This country eats its people and great men who would have gone before Idahosa. Kenya was before Nigeria. You see, there was a line in, in, in Nigeria where Idahosa came and the generations came now. Kina Selman came and Kina Tibi Joshua came. There was a place it started, it went consistently. Kina Oyakilome, then they come from that first generation. In Kenya, it was cut. And we lived in wilderness for 40 years, spiritual wilderness. Where in the 1980s and 1990s, even servants of God killed each other because of... People killed each other because of permission to host great American evangelists. If you study the history of what will you kuwana because of positions here on the altar. So the thing that has been used to eat the men of God is women. Hallelujah. So when we realized that this one was an attack, so we took my wife and we, we, we prayed. My wife herself prayed for 21 days. 21 days. And let me tell you today, I've been fasting day fast from January 1st until today. I've been fasting every day, every day, Sunday to Sunday, from January 1st. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you, never think that you're too strong. We stand because Jesus gives us the grace to stand. The moment you take yourself to be too strong, that is the day they will turn you into bread. They will eat you. Hallelujah. God is good. And let me tell you, the devil, I have learned dimensions of the spiritual realm that maybe I did not know by last year. You know even prayer warriors were used Somebody comes and tells you, I've seen you separate with your wife. And I see you with so-and-so. <laughs> but I thank God there are two people. There is a prayer warrior here who God gave the exact words that were used in a temptation. I had these words and I said, I know those words. The words that come came from the mouth of temptation. Then there's also there are two, hallelujah, prayer warriors who saw this thing and say, man of God, need to take your attack. I told them, I know, I've already been praying for so and so, for and so times. When the devil, the devil can manipulate men, I, I, saw, many, I saw prayer, prayer, prayer warriors being manipulated. Somebody come and ask you, man of God, I've been in prayer. You know I've been fasting for the last seven days. Are you sure that this is your wife? <laughs> and you know they've been fasting for seven days. True, true. Because what I saw, you are not with her. The devil get thee behind me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So when I saw the finish line, I told God, this thing, I'm not celebrating it alone. I'm breaking the curse for my people in Jesus' name. I'm breaking the curse for my people in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Then I remember the scripture where they say they ate the scroll and the scroll was sweet in the mouth. They say, which one shall we eat? They say, for cake, we use cake to celebrate. We are celebrating in advance in Jesus' name. Yes. I'm your man of God. I am your pastor. God has used me to, has helped me to cross a line. You must cross that line in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And please, my wife, come. Please forgive me for being short. Well, you know, chairman, you know, serious people, we, serious people look for, you know, hallelujah. God is good. This is my wife. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 
so, so men, if you look at her and she's beautiful and you feel like you would want to have her, please forget it, she's mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. And also women. If you look at me and you like me, you like the way these two devils are turning white. You like my pot, the shape of it. How can she make pot then you have that pot? It's hers now. So this is my wife, by God's grace. That curse is broken. Hallelujah. There will come people beautiful, taller, more educated, more eloquent. Okay, go give you your own. This is my own. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have degree, you have doctorate, you are professor, you can talk whatever. <laughs> You can dance better than her. Whatever qualification you have, may God give you your own in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is my wife. Kuyundo Bibiangu. Maeja Oda. Oyono Yomutumi Akoa. Nadire Doge. <laughs> and everybody that had the vision and prayed for us, I bless you. Amen. If you are not settled, you will settle in Jesus' name. Amen. This altar is now speaking for success in marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever line has been against you and your family, it is breaking today in Jesus' name. It is breaking today in Jesus' name. You will not make a mistake. You will not make a mistake in Jesus Christ's name. We all come from somewhere. Wherever we are coming from is being corrected today. Today, even in the area of marriage, we carry the blessing of Abraham. Amen. The Bible says that all the world will be blessed because of him. Amen. We carry that blessing today in Jesus' name. Amen. And no matter the stagnation or delay that has been in your marital life, remember, Abraham's curse was broken at 100 years. You are not late. It is breaking today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. My wife is shaking because something gives her the revelation that I will kiss her. Let me not kiss her, but let me just hug her. Somebody carry your own hand in Jesus' name. Yeah. And whoever is carrying your hand, may nobody ever take them away from you in Jesus' name. Yeah. This camera guy was not cameraing me before. <laughs> huh? I sent. How can you pick a picture? <laughs> they were not taking a picture of me with my hand. Bring that Mount Kenya car. You didn't? <laughs> or they will beat us another one when we are eating cake. God is good. God is good. Let me just, let us just finish on the marriage thing, then we'll just remain with the eating with the cake. Then, then we go to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Marriage is the most attacked area in the life of people and believers. Because, you know, what destroys men and women is fornication and adultery. But when marriage is there, people don't fornicate, people don't go into adultery, then the devil is limited. God is good. 
What I will tell you about marriage for my daughters and my sons here to get married. Pray. Pray. Let me tell you something concerning my wife. You see, I have a beautiful wife. I told God, give me somebody who has gone through problems. So that whatever, because I was going through problems well, well that time. And anybody that does not know problem could not have survived as my wife. I told God, give me a wife who has gone through trouble and problems. And uh, I told God, please, if you, it is your will to give me somebody short like this, he's a man. But God, if you can find somebody tall, small, I will really appreciate. <laughs> it's no bad to be short, okay? Everybody has their own desire. Hallelujah. And uh, so when I told God something, that God, when it, the time came, I told God I will not choose, but rather God, you choose for me. If you choose somebody that I do not look like loving, please help me to love them. So I told him that I saw my wife in a dream. And something else I told God. I told God, don't show me her good qualities. Show me her bad qualities. Somebody should get a revelation there. You know, anybody can live with good qualities. But what destroys marriage are the bad qualities that you do not know when you're getting into the house. The, the things that come as a surprise, that, are, that is what destroys marriage. So for me, I told God, show me her and show me weakness. So in the dream that when I saw her, I saw her sweeping. And she was sweeping so, so slowly. So slowly. I said, which one is this one? <laughs> so when I woke up, I said that, God, maybe my wife is not, you know I'm chap chap. I'm chap chap and I can do 10 things that I go. So, hey, say maybe the person that God is bringing is not be chap chap. So the first day we got, the first day we were in the house and my wife was to cook breakfast. We had breakfast at one. <laughs> I say, hey, Jehovah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know, we had breakfast at one, but she was busy from eight <laughs> in the process of making breakfast. <laughs> but you know, God knew that I can do 10 things at the same time. So we do not need to do 20 things at the same time, but there are areas that I needed. Hallelujah. So you hear, I prayed. And God showed me, then God also showed me a vision that she had something like glass, a glass pyramid in her hands. And what God told me that this person has a curse of work in her life. So when I, we got to talk, she told me that she had never worked for more than three months. God is good. Then we get into the marriage. Getting into the marriage... She's not pregnant one month, she's not pregnant two months, despite the work, I was working very seriously towards that. Then she comes and asks me, she asks me, you are a pastor, why am I not getting pregnant? And I go to God and ask God, God, why is she not getting pregnant? <laughs> and uh, God tells me that if she were to get pregnant the way she is, she would have to be in bed from the third to the ninth month because her womb cannot carry a baby. So I go and ask my wife, this is what the Lord is telling me, that we need to pray that there's something wrong with you. What can you tell me about this? Then my wife tells me there's nothing serious, only the small fact that I had my first period when I was 20 years old. <laughs> she had her first monthly period when she was 20 years old and it, Kumbe, it was a word that was spoken people knew her and all of her community knew that she did not have the ability to have children but you see where God guides he provides <laughs> blessed be the name of the father so by the third month she was pregnant and the rest of it is history it was pregnant and pregnant and pregnant and pregnant you understand we have children like stairs. God is good. So concerning marriage, those, those who are seeking marriage, let me tell you, the, yes, your eyes, yes, there's your eyes, then there's the desire, but please, above everything, look for the leading of God. 
Look for the leading of God. Ambia bwana nisaidie. Ambia bwana nionyeshe. You know, God can show you somebody who does not qualify according to the standards that you have put. But if God is inside of it, you will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. My wife came when I was poor. Nilikuwa maskini. I have told you before that we were, I used to cook on a stove. A, a stove that, you see, the ones that you have those things on for cutting sufuria, and they were gone, so we were using stones. I was using stones to hold the sufuria in position. And then when you, when you destroy it, okay, when you want to put it off, the, the thing for putting it off was, was dead, so we had to use water. And if you use water, it was bad. Your neighbors would come and complain. You want to kill us. You see, your neighbor, not you, your neighbor would come and complain, you want to kill us. So I had to take it outside and kill it there. But my wife came and because when, when the, the water for Ugali used to pour on the sofa, I never used to wash it. When tea poured on it, I never used to wash it. So she just came and cleaned it very well and it became very sparkling and we started life there. And we blessed the name of the Father. Amen. And I know that the grace that I'm seeing, the blessing that I'm seeing is because God was in it. If you are praying, pray for the will of God. And something that I will tell you today, there is the will of God in your vision, but then also apply the word of God. If you see a vision, the one you see is somebody's husband, tell the devil to get behind you because the word of God does not say that. That is what helped me with the prayer warriors who are showing, who, who came and told me that I see so and so, is, I, I've seen so and so beside you. I've seen you go shopping with so and so. And I asked God, what is this thing that these people are seeing? And I remember I was in the gym. Don't mind this one. At times I go to the gym. And I had God speaking to me clearly and saying, when I put marriage together, the purpose is until death. God spoke to me. I was asking, what are these people seeing? And God told me, and when the Lord spoke that one to me, I said, okay, so all these things are the attempts, all these things is the craftiness of Satan. They ask God to show you, then let the word of God stand when you're making that decision. Hallelujah. In this society, you can marry somebody who was divorced. God is good. Hallelujah. But, he may be, but at that point that you're getting together, that person should be Alone, that is the word of God. There are those here with the two homes, men. The Bible says that as you have come, maintain it. As you have come. So Sufkiri Kwamba will tell you to divorce because you found yourself that you are the second wife. No. As you have come before God, because we came with weakness, that, that is what the Bible says, that he, as you have come, maintain. Do not leave. Okay? Do not leave. As you, as you have come. If that process was before your salvation. But if it came after that, that temptation, then stand on the word of God. No matter the vision you see, the dream you see, let me tell you, I, I was studying Maria Woodworth just the other day, and Maria Woodworth spoke something that she came to realize that visions come in pairs. Either the devil will come before the, God, the Lord's vision, or after the Lord's vision, the devil will come. You need discernment. And at times, if it is not discernment, you need to stand on the word of God and do the right thing. So pray. Omba. And I know everybody, no matter how in a, it looks that you have delayed, God is able to give you a new start and he will give you. But prayer. Don't just be married because somebody approached you. It could be a trap of the enemy. Because this man is available, it could be a trap of the enemy. Blessed be the name of the Father. Pray, look for the leading of God. When you see the leading of God, the next thing, you see a vision or you see somebody, and you know at times it is not even dream like me. At times you may just feel in your heart like you belong to this man. Like Billy Graham said, Billy Graham said that when she saw the wife, he knew that, he just felt that this is mine. So you may feel it. When you feel it, look for peace. If you feel conflict in your heart, please don't move forward. If you feel conflict, look for that conflict. It could be things that you need to pray about before you get into the house. I told you there are two things. You know, when God told me that, that thing, showed me that thing, 
in, in, the, in, in my hand's wife. It means that this is, this is spirit of poverty. So I just called her and said, go, 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 God bless your mercy. God bless you, it is well. Please, I would like to see you. Can I find you on Friday at 2? Or we can meet that area, church there. So she comes and you know I cannot tell her that I need to deliver you because I want to marry you. <laughs> so I just close to her like I want to breathe. There. Fire! Fire! <laughs> and something else. My wife used to eat stone. If you eat stone, by the way it is an addiction, it is something from the devil. She used to eat stone so bad that her teeth, we are working on repairing her teeth now. She used to eat, she, this one, if you would have allowed her, she would have finished the world. <laughs> you see, that was an addiction. So I learned about that one and I, I prayed for her and she vomited that stuff. She vomited that stuff. Then after a few days, she said, since you prayed for me, I have not eaten stone. The urge go, went. You see, that is repair. You know repair before you get into the house. If you don't have that grace for deliverance, bring them for deliverance once you establish in your heart that he ni mungu. Tell him, if you really want me, let's go for deliverance. I will not go to man of God. I want to, I can pray for myself. Please, Kimbia, run away. If they truly want you, it is of God. They will agree to come for prayer, for deliverance. Even this week, I thank God. I had a young man who came. A young man who came with uh, somebody that they want to marry. And they came and told me that, man of God, my, nobody in my family is married. And her also, nobody in her family is married, but want to get married. But we know this is trouble. And they came and they prayed for them here. They came as guests. They spent here and I prayed for them and I blessed them and I know they will live to the end of their lives. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. There's what you pray for before you pray and you set it right. Then there's what you'll pray for when there are things that you'll, you'll learn when you are inside of the house. Like now for me, if God had not shown me that my wife is not a very fast wor worker, it could have affected my marriage badly because I'm that man of fast, fast. I want food. By the time I, feel, I finish, I want to play it on the table. <laughs> that is my nature. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? That is my nature. David, my friend, the one who is close to me, knows. When I say something, I want it done. Then, then. So you see, everything in my, wife, in my life works that way except marriage. But that one is allowed because that is of God. Blessed be the name of the Father. Be if God had not shown me, because there are weaknesses that if God does not show you, you go to discover in the marriage, your marriage can break. Let God show you. Then something else, my sons and daughters, before you get into marriage, the signs of who you're marrying will come early. There was once I, I spotted someone early in life and I wanted, I saw that this one, he, even if I take to my village, the village elders will save our son, you have done well. God is good. Then she works with us, a bank, very serious. Then one day I go to visit them at their home. When I go and visit them at their home, I'm seated very well and say, eh, daughter of Zion, please help me water. And she tells me, okay, the glasses are there, and on that side, the mtungi for, <laughs> the jar for water is there, so you can help yourself. Let me tell you, the way I stepped out, <laughs> I, I dusted my feet like the apostles. They were told by Jesus, if they don't accept you, wipe the dust on your feet. I went, nearly on a belly. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So there are signs, you know, the problem is that, the problem with our daughters and sons getting married is that you look for the good thing. Wow, she's a good cook. Wow. And she calls you a name, she insults you, but you're looking, oh, she's a good cook. The one who insults you before marriage, that will chase you with a knife when you get married. The signs are there. This thing I was telling one of my sons yesterday, Hallelujah. That everybody can live with the good qualities. Look out for the bad qualities. And there are always signs even before you get married. There are signs. It's only that we ignore. You look for tall, dark, and handsome. Let me tell you, tall, dark, and handsome will not apply in the house. You'll wish they are short, fat, and brown. <laughs> when they start to disturb you in the house. Hallelujah. I had a, a lady insulting brown men at Miss Vizio I'm too beautiful. <laughs> I cannot get married to a beautiful man. <laughs> I want dark. Mousi looks like a bodyguard. That thing, those things do not apply in the house. You see people getting, coming out of their marriage and marrying uglier people than the people that they had. Because you realize that beauty, 
the way you see her and uh, <laughs> you feel like uh, you want to walk like this. Let me tell you, that applies for boyfriend, girlfriend. In the house, you want peace. You want food with enough salt. You want clean clothes that have been ironed well. That beauty, that brown that you see, that your villagers are plowed with, they don't apply in marriage. What you have to see, but you have trouble in your house. Hallelujah. Look out for the signs before you get in. There are battles, don't, and this foolishness that he, that he drinks alcohol, but God will change him for me. Ah. Somebody once, I heard somebody say that you get married to a son or a daughter of the devil, your father-in-law will give you trouble. <laughs> you are a son of God, a daughter of God. That one drinking alcohol, they are sons of the devil. Look at John chapter 8. You are sons of your father, the devil. Hallelujah. They will give you trouble. The, your father-in-law will give you trouble. Because you say, God, our father, God, I'm, I'm the father of this one. Who told you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And two shall not agree. Shall, shall not work together unless they agree. Let me tell you, this one especially goes to my daughters. The difference of men is Jesus. Wanaume, wanawake, tafauti ya wanaume ni Yesu. Hallelujah. Men are tempted. Your beauty, your cooking, your everything will not maintain your man in the house. It is Jesus who will maintain the man in the house. And unfortunately, we are in a society where now ladies tell men, I like you. And let me tell you, that word that I like you, it confuses men, married or single. Those who stand, it is Jesus who helps them. The difference of men when it comes to being faithful, ni Yesu. Well, when the two have been disappointed in church, I want to try outside, okay, good luck with your father-in-law there. You know, relationship can break. You want to be married by somebody in church, and it can break, because even though you are both in church, there's the aspect of God's will. You understand? Though you are both in church, there's the aspect of God's will. You can choose each other, but God has not designed. It will break if you are truly before God. Amen. 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 Those who say, I've tried in church and I've been disappointed. Though you are in church, there's the aspect of God's will. Hallelujah. Not everybody, you, that you find somebody in church does not mean that they are perfect. Blessed be the name of the Father. But God will lead you to the right person. Let me tell you, I've seen, you see, Solomon said that he studied things and the aspect of men and women was one that defeated him. There's a sister of ours, David, there's a sister of ours who we looked at her. This lady before getting married got into a fight with a pastor and tried to grab the pastor's private part. Alijaribu kubuguda, kurukukungoa, of a pastor. He said, this is our sister, who will marry her? But let me tell you, this daughter of ours is past seven years in marriage, has never fought with the husband once. <laughs> marriage, you cannot just judge by the flesh. Hallelujah. Those who thought that can never settle, are they in the house? Those who look like quality are still waiting for the beautiful ones and the hands out to be born. God is good. Prayer, look for signs. Amen? Look for signs. Don't fool yourself. You do not change people. It is God who changes people. And if God has not changed them by that point that you want to get in, you know that you'll be responsible for that. Don't come. You know, there are many people today, pray for me. My husband is an alcoholic. I said, when did they start drinking alcohol? When we married, he was drinking, but not the extent he's drinking now. You don't change anybody. And if, if you are a child of God, ask God to change them for you now. Take them the anointing water. Hallelujah. Anoint your hand, you're greeting them. Pray for them. Hallelujah. Until transformation happens. Blessed be the name of the Father. And one thing that I tell you as I finish on this issue of marriage, the aspect of peace in the heart. A man can have nothing. You know, my, my wife had plans. We were to date for three years and ETC and ETC and ETC and we overruled all that. And you know, my wife was in a church in Kangimi Harvest. So Harvest, hmm, let me give you the story. Hey! <laughs> harvest. 
Harvest is the church in Kangemi that has those girls. You know them. So when they heard that Mercy had gotten some Itunga there in Kangemi, they came to visit us. And you know they laughed. Because I was living, I was living in that house where I told you somebody smokes on, the, on top of you, you feel it. Because Chini Nimawe, then there's wood on top, then there's a small layer of sand. And, uh, then, so if they smoke there, you get the, the, the smell here. And they came and they laughed. They came and they laughed. And the day they stepped out, they never came again. Because to them, their friend Mercy had gotten lost. But where God is inside, even if you start in a 10-foot hole, you will ascend to the highest mountain. In Jesus' name. Let me tell you, they, the women from the church where my wife was, they stopped greeting her. Wakikutana nae kwa barabara. Hallelujah. I'm scared married to a key deliverance man, and them they organized people. They never used to greet her. Hallelujah. Honor came back. They have a good school that is uh, expensive by the standards of here, not expensive everywhere, but the standards of there. When we took our son to that school, and they asked, <laughs> That is when they started greeting her, because they discovered that something is happening in Jesus' name. Peace of heart. Jama ineza kuwa viatu yendi anajua ya right na ya left. It is only him who knows the difference of the right and the, and the left shoe. Life has caused the shoes to look alike. God is good. But you feel in your heart, please, where God guides, he provides. If it is God, you know there are some people, you girl will never succeed, and the man will never succeed. But though you join poor, the combination of you two will bring success that will astound the world. You may be nothing. And that is what happened to me, to us. Hallelujah. As I was thinking, she was praying. Blessed be the name of the Father. When I stopped thinking, we are praying together. God is good. I give her an issue of prayer. She prays until I command her to now stop. Blessed be the name of the Father. She mentions, she mentions some things in prayer that I was praying for and I even stopped. She'll mention it in prayer. And diligent, in, you know, somebody that helps you maintain God. I tell you the truth. Me, the gift that I gave my wife was a prayer carpet. And I told her, my wife, it is your responsibility to get this thing that we pray on it every day. And I tell you the carpet that we prayed on eight years ago is still beside my bed today. Hallelujah. You know, she discovered that she can forget. So instead of removing it and bringing it back, she made sure she, it is just there. So when I wake up at night, I kneel there. When, and we pray. I pray at night. And she prays in the morning. Because we are human beings. Let me tell you, human beings collide. No matter how much you love each other. You collided with your sister and you are born from the same womb. Even if we collide five minutes before prayer, we will breathe. <laughs> you click. Then you kneel there, and she also kneels there, and you wait before holding hands. But you are kneeling down. Mnangoja kwanza mpoe. But we will not skip prayer. Because I know somebody who had such an arrangement, but the marriage broke because they would get so angry, the man gets into the bed and fall, puts the cover on top of him. He puts the cover because now they will not pray because he's angry. I knew of a man like that some years ago. So when if, even if we collide three minutes to prayer, we'll say there, we'll be kneeling down when we breathe in and breathe out, breathe in and breathe out, and when we say we hold our hands and say, Oh God help us. We are mortal beings. And we pray. God is good. And at times we kneel and I say, I, with my bass, you know, when you are, men cannot apologize with small voice, we just apologize with bass. Our ego, Paulus, Basis, Sorry. Man, you had, I say sorry. Man, you had, you with your big shoulder and big head, you don't want to say sorry. I say sorry. 
Me, I say sorry. Hallelujah. And now also she calls me that name. She calls me that name and says sorry. And you know, let me tell you women, don't compete with the ego of a man. And uh, can I teach you a secret? A man will not fight somebody who is not fighting them. A man wants to fight you, but you come in humility and say sorry. Even if they want to accelerate that battle and you keep quiet after saying sorry. And a true sorry. Eh? A man, I will beat you. Nita kuzaba. Nita kumisa. Pole. You know, even if they continue. I mean, nita umezoya sana. Unazamanga tu pole. Then they will keep quiet. Say, Nisaidia viya tuwapo. They may progress with the battle for two, three minutes, but it will go down. Hallelujah. My wife, at times, I even know that she's not even sorry, but she knows that face. <laughs> she calls me that name. I will not tell you that name. <laughs> because my son, the small one, is calling me that name also. <laughs> and say sorry. You know, you may even want to accelerate it, but something will be hitting you. Now she has said sorry now, and she looks repentant now. You cannot slap. But you know, the battles that come, the man says, I will beat you. And the woman responds, if your man beat me. <laughs> that man will seek not to beat you, but he will seek to prove that he's a man. His interest will no longer be on beating you. His interest will be on proving that he's a real man. And some of our people, you know, they work those hard jobs. You feel like cement has been laid on you. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Father. Hallelujah. God is good. Yes. Let me tell you, in marriage, one thing I tell you from experience, seven years to eight years is a long time. Hallelujah. You, this, I'm now talking to married people already, and those who will come. You will never, marriage will never go if when temperance, temperance flares, when, when, when you become angry, you become both at the same. One of you has to go down. One of you has to go down. And you that claim to have Jesus in you, learn to go down. Withdraw. Amen? One thing I tell you with my wife, Sisi Kukua and me to stand here and be like we are getting married for the first time. My wife has never answered me back. This one I was telling him, the young drama guy. I was telling him yesterday. One thing with my wife, my wife has never answered me back. You know, at times I am wrong because a man Prophet is, in, prophet is not in the house. In the house is Mandev. You don't operate marriage by revelation. Hallelujah. You operate marriage by love. Hallelujah. And you know, at times I am wrong, but I have not discovered that I'm wrong. And, and at times I can come and maybe raise my voice. Why has this happened? My wife has never answered me back. How I, at times you see tears that are coming on her eyes. You need, to, you need to hear this thing out. You don't need to proceed with this battle. So you breathe and you let her talk. But coming at it, you do this, you do this, you do this. I told you that that weakness of where the cloth drop, it remains on that floor. Nowadays I try, by the way. At least once a week I put it on the... <laughs> at least once a week I try my best. But that weakness, no matter how it is, how she will handle it. She will come and call me that name. And at times just point at that thing. Say, sir, sir. Say, and, uh, I, wish. <laughs> I don't know who put it there. <laughs> <laughs> then we turn it into a joke. Hallelujah. I, at times I, I will see it and she sees it at the same time and I'll be the first one to ask. Mama, why did you put my trouser down? <laughs> Hallelujah. But answering me or oh, that one has not happened. That restraint. Learn it. Your marriage will stand. Akuna, you are at the same level because you are right. Let me, at times you keep quiet. Not because you are right. For the sake of peace. Everything can be worked out. Because moods change. Two, three hours later your mood will be right. Or two, three days later your mood may be right. And you can tell, you know, by the way, like it will pick a kelele, like any, this was the situation. And that is how we survive. Because somebody who was born in their home, you are born in your home, you come to live together. There must be a point you will disagree. 
If your own siblings will disagree, this person born where they're born and you, you, there will come days you will disagree. The greatest thing that we need in marriage is a never-ending presence of God. A never-ending presence of God. Say my amen. amen. Can we talk something just briefly about the presence of God? And this one, I want to put it, I want us to just look at Genesis. I just mentioned something smaller and we finish, we go into the ceremony of making things right. Genesis chapter 39 and verse, we start from verse 1. Genesis chapter number 39. So there are those I know who are here and you are going through trouble. You are saying, man of God, you don't know my husband. Man of God, you don't know my wife. If you are sure you are led there by God, fight it through. You feel God led you there. It was good. Let me tell you, I have testimonies here. That testimony, a most recent one. There's a brother who's very close to me who's one of the security people. And now they were facing trouble such that their wife never believed in me as a servant of God. If you are a man, that will hurt you. Hallelujah. That my sister of mine, I believe she may be in the service today. Let me tell you, we prayed with this man. And I, one day I told this man, this your wife that is, that is causing you trouble, she will be my best friend. She will be fighting for me. When people say, man of God is this, she will say, no. Leave that man of God alone. And we prayed. And you know, it was... <laughs> I didn't want you to stand you. <laughs> okay, just come, just come. <laughs> I was speaking in parable. I already saw your husband and I was not going to show. <laughs> husband, come. <laughs> you hear we were praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. I never wanted to show them, but she has stood. <laughs> This lady never used to like me. Never believed in me as a servant of God. But I used to tell the husband, she will be my defender. Hallelujah. Because even if she tells me that she calls you this, I know they are married. I will never talk bad about her. I never talk bad about her. You see? I never, and I also keep encouraging my friend. We pray. We just pray. I told, I told my friend that she will be my defender in future when people talk bad. And we trusted God. Now look, they are matching and in charge. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hallelujah. In fact, my brother, today you're not on security. Please sit there. Must be you. Please sit here. Please bring her back. Just as bring the back, they sit here. <laughs> God is good. I thank God for them being here. Don't give at in a camp by If God brought you together, you if God you will face situations, God will still see you through. And here I respect marriage. Even if you come tell me your husband said that I'm the chief of the worshiper, I will not talk bad about your husband. We will just pray and trust God. And such testimonies, may somebody receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever is causing disagreement, tap into this anointing. Be one in Jesus' name. Amen. Tap this grace. Be one in Jesus' name. Amen. And that devil that is splitting you will be defeated today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God. Thank you. I was speaking in parable, but I think God wanted to help somebody because you know that I'm not just preaching, but living example. So long as it came from God. And I thank God for them. Yesterday, the mama is the one sent me a testimony that they lived in poverty, but now back together and they have bought a truckload of stones they want to build for their parents. They not only became, they not only agreed, but they truly became one. No matter if it is from God, challenges are there to be overcome. Not every challenge is to split us. Amen? Amen. Jesus loves you. You're on Genesis 39? Verse 1. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, 
And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. The Lord was? And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3. And the master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Hallelujah. So it was from the time that he made him the overseer of his house and all he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for the sake of Joseph. And the blessing of the Lord was upon him. Say my amen. amen. Then I jump. This is Joseph in prison. We read verse 20. And Joseph's master took him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. The Lord was with Joseph. I know there are versions that say that the presence of God was with Joseph. There are versions in the same evil. Hallelujah. The presence of God was with Joseph. And he, the Lord was, and, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison committed into Joseph's hands all the prisoners who were in prison. And whatever he did there, it was prosperous. Say ma, amen. amen. Now, uh, briefly about the presence of God. I told you when I was thinking about this message and about marriage, I, the greatest factor that is required for even this success in marriage is the presence of God. Say ma, the presence of God. Now, there are many places in the Bible that I could have read about the presence of God. There was the presence of God when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fire. Amen? There was the presence of God when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. There was the cloud and there was fire. There was the presence of God. But now I talk about the presence of God in the life of a man who was in slavery. Then number two, even in slavery, he became a prisoner. But now in slavery, God is good. Sorry, just sitting up. In slavery, the Bible says that the Lord was with him. The presence of God was with him such that everything that he touched prospered. And the Bible says that his master, the one who owned him as a slave, discovered that his success is coming from the fact that this man has the presence of God. Where are they? He's a slave, but with the presence of God. Then he goes to prison, a bad condition, no freedom, no shaving of hair. But one thing that remains is that the presence of God was with him. Even as we've talked about marriage, we need marriage, breakthrough for marriage, restoration of marriage. The number one thing that we need is the presence of God. The presence of God gave a slave success in slavery. The presence of God gave success to a prisoner in prison. The presence of God will walk you through any situation that you may find yourself in and it will settle your peace in Jesus' name. The presence of God repairs. The presence of God directs. I am the product of repair by the presence of God. Blessed be the name of the Father. The person that I am before salvation is not the person that is standing here. The person that I am, the point I'm beginning ministry, is not the man that is standing before you here today. The product, I am the product of a repair by the Holy Spirit, by the presence of God. David knew the weight of this when he had committed sin with Bathsheba in Psalms 51. He says, do not take away your presence from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit. Anything else, God, you can take, but leave me with your presence. Because once you have the presence of God, you can build afresh. When the presence of God is with you, no matter how destroyed you are, can build afresh in Jesus name when the presence when you attain the presence of God like mercy attain the presence of God 
you can break away from the curses that are transgenerational. The curse of getting to the eighth year is a curse that has been in her family over 100 years, but it is broken. You understand? Crave for the presence of God. Yearn for the presence of God. Desire more than anything the presence of God. The presence of God. And let me tell you, I'm not talking about the presence that you feel kiki kiki, but the constant, that constant awareness, that constant being of the Holy Spirit just with you. Say my amen. Say my amen. amen. Say my amen. amen. There's a scripture I want to read in Ephesians. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, sorry. From verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6. From verse 10. And especially verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 10. Verse 10, 11, 12. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Be, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Say my amen. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Hallelujah. And this one, disregard the flesh. D disregard your advantages in the flesh and seek for this thing that Joseph had this thing that Daniel had that shut the mouth of the lions we call it the presence of God be strong in the Lord how do you become strong in the Lord the strength in the, of being strong in the Lord or the Lord's strength in you will be expressed in your results. The Lord's strength in you will be expressed in your results. Hallelujah. It will be expressed in your results and will be aided by his presence. And let me tell you something now. We are talking about marriage. There are some people who have not gotten to that place of getting marriage. Though by divine will you could have been married five years ago, but the requisite presence to fight that battle, the requisite presence of God to fight the battle of, 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 of lacking marriage is not there. Amen? Hallelujah. Kunawatu, you could have broken the curse of marriage in your family. If you would have focused not on attracting man, but by focus on attracting presence. Same attracting presence. Attracting presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Attracting what? Don't focus on attracting man. And let me tell you the truth. Don't even focus on attracting money. Don't focus on attracting relationships. Focus on attracting presence. The presence of God. The presence of God we have learned from the scripture. Shut the mouth of a lion. The Bible says that Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fiery furnace, but there was seen a fourth man amongst them. So this fourth man that was seen, you know this fourth man didn't come out when the three of them came out. But this fourth man was the presence of God. The presence of God cools fires. And the fire was so hot that the men that threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego inside, they died. But the presence of God with them. Hallelujah. In marriage, God, his spirit, his presence is the third factor. He's the third member of a marriage. Blessed be the name of the Father. You hear what I've said? In marriage, God is the third person. And that one by his presence. Let me tell you. Once you as a single person, you have attracted God. He becomes the second person. He will attract the third person. That wife or husband that you want. Hallelujah. Get God be in the second man. The second person. The third person. Hallelujah. You are in marriage. You are fighting. Your marriage portrays 
or the state of spiritual life portrays that there is a that th there is lacking the presence of God. Lacking how? You get somebody to marry you, they disappoint you. So I've had people, <laughs> I've had a lady who three people took dowry. Somebody takes dowry and does not even demand it back. Three people took dowry and they still left her. That one should take you to another. <laughs> Stop looking for man. Look for presence. Amen? You find that in your family, ladies get married, then the husbands die. Stop focusing. Yes, please your husband, but focus greatly on getting the presence of God into that marriage because that is what will guarantee life. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Of my strength, what I can boast of, what I should not boast, what I should be proud of, should be the amount of the presence of God that is in me. Let me tell you, this was my strategy. And today I will say confidently, I thank God it was the strategy that I had. Because I've told you over and over that we were, those days when we were with only Pastor David, that we could talk. And I used to tell him that, you know, the amount of God that we have is what will attract things to us. By that time we were poor, we were in a church that did not even have a floor, no musical instrument, and I used to tell him, God has given us what he has seen that we qualify for. We had nothing, and it can help somebody. That one can help somebody. Stop the spirit of pursuit of things. Watch ambio ya kutafuta vitu. Stop the speed of pursuing. I want a husband. You try, you shave this month, you have shaved your eyelids. Next month, you let it grow. Maybe I don't, nobody asked me because of this thing. At least, you try black lipstick, red lipstick. Kia ngoa lipstick. There's something they apply on their face nowadays. They look like snail has walked on them. Wacha ni wambia tu kweli. Mina ogopanga yo kitu. Ama ayi. Hallelujah. It is good to dress well. Good usikai tu shamba shambra. Especially those daughters of mine that you want somebody to marry you know, na na stocking kwa nyumba. You move with the stocking out of the house to go to the shop and you're here making me tired of praying for you, Pate Buana. <laughs> I'm getting tired and you are, you are returning my prayer to sender. Hallelujah. I see even two o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, people still have stocking on their head. And that boy, God opened marriage for them now. Okay, be decent. Make yourself to as good as you can be. God is good. good. Let me, it's good to be smart, but presence of God is greater. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I had gotten the vision of my wife, one day she came, there's a, a, some black jacket that was in fashion, and the hand used to reach here. What, it going to come a leather, then the hand is tight here. Ladies, you know it. It was in fashion some years ago. Let me tell you, one day I saw her walking with it. You see, it's in my memory until today. I saw her and I saw an angel. I say, though I'm afraid of girls, this one I must conquer. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, look decent. Don't just look Madhokovanyo because you're trusting the grace of God. But the grace of God is greater. Amen? Unfortunately, when I married her and I asked her, my life, well, there's a black jacket that I saw you that you had, and where is that jacket? And she told me, sorry, it was borrowed. I had borrowed. <laughs> Akwanga, you are listening to my tactic. Okay, use. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Just look decent. Blessed be the name of the Father. Unfortunately, when that, fa that fashion went away before I had money to buy a fashion, <laughs> blessed be the name of the Father. But though you be decent, though you be presentable, seek the presence of God. It is the presence of God that transforms. I was a drunkard when Mercy was born again. I am sure her prayers contributed to me getting born again. 
because I was in the bar, but God knew that I was a husband. Amen? The presence of God will transform people for you. You know, there are things that God does for your sake. It is said because of David, I will do this for Israel. Because of my servant David, I will maintain the kingdom of Israel for the sake of my servant in Jeri. Some man can be taken from the bar and be cleansed and made to love God because God wants you to have the peace of having a man in the house. But presence can get you that greater than any effort that you can make. Prosperity, connections. You are praying for divine. There are people that are praying for destiny connectors. Let me tell you, you can get destiny connectors without ever mentioning them in prayer by simply wanting the presence of God. There is this scripture that I learned early in life that the Lord never seek, never, he will never forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And you know the translation that I got from that line? He'll never leave you nor forsake you. It means when I'm in poverty, I'm with him. It means when I'm in rejection, I'm with him. It means when I'm sleeping hungry, I am with him. Blessed be the name of the Father. So that aspect of the Lord being with you, not leaving you and not forsaking you. Please get Pastor. <laughs> Settle Pastor Sheshe, please. Hallelujah. That aspect of the presence of God, it will come a time that God knows that you need to build a house. The correct connections will come in Jesus' name. You have seen people who get marriage partners and they don't have money for dowry at all. And I have seen this one with my own eyes. Some, somebody that we needed to pay dowry for was in the ministry some time ago. And, uh, and they needed to go buy cows in Western. David, you had how much in the morning? 6,000. Hallelujah. That, the, when it was wanted to, to take dowry, we had, I think, 6,000 in the morning, and that is the day of traveling. They have made plans. They are going to buy cows tomorrow. The guy needs to travel in the evening. Blessed be the name of the Father. They were just to buy cows, those cows of, uh, of our place there, those ordinary ones, not these ones of town. And by the end of the day, when this guy was traveling, we had an excess of 50,000. And where we were, that was a breakthrough. Bona Jesus, if you were. Where we were at that time, those days of darkness, that was a breakthrough. Amen? When the presence of God, and you know, there was once we had somebody, they are getting, these people are getting married. The ceremony is on Sunday. Okay? So we have invited pastors to come and bless. We are going to bless this marriage. You know, those days of poverty, we saw God. On Saturday is when people sit down that the guests have come from the lady's side, the guests have come from the man's side. Saturday is when the few people, Kina Mama Shuli, we sit down and say, we have guests tomorrow, what are we going to cook for them? Saturday. You say, what do you have? Me, this is the only thing I have. Me, this is the only thing I have. Then you go to Ndonyo to buy meat. We don't know what happened. The little food that we had multiplied. The guests were more than 3,000. Food multiplied. It was thrown away. Animals come and eat and leave it for two weeks. Excess food. Multiplication of food. The presence of God was there. When the presence of God is there, your pockets does not matter anymore. The depth of your pocket does not matter anymore. Hallelujah. When the presence of God is there, it does not matter who knows you anymore does not matter. People knowing you, connections are an advantage. But let me, the presence of God, the presence of God, the presence of God. I see a flash and I remember something. In my early days of salvation, I'm traveling to Voy. I've just gotten born again and I'm really, those days I'm praying and praying like a madman. We get to Mtituande, that place where we eat. Somebody, somebody comes out of the bus and faints. Hallelujah. And I talk about, and this person faints and this person becomes cold. God is good. You see, it was a very small thing. It's a very small testimony. So this person, so everybody is there. Ah, maskini bwana. Mwite ambulance, mfanya nini, mfanya nini. Then may I go close. I don't know why I've never remembered this. And now, my Herere tells me to pray for this man. Fallen up under a gari. My Herrera tells me pray and the devil tells me don't dare. You'll be shamed before people. Hallelujah. 
And you know, mostly Muslims are there. So I don't know, one, I, I get the courage and I went and, first of all, I didn't just pray direct, I touched the, the leg of this, I put my leg to touch his leg. And uh, I felt like faith building. In, in Jesus' name. I didn't even say anything beyond in Jesus' name because uh, when I say Jesus' name, confusion set in. I became afraid again. And in Jesus' name, and this guy moved to the side and moved again to the side. Now, Jamaka, Amka. The, the guy woke up. They didn't even ask me a question. They didn't ask or whatever, whatever, whatever. But somebody says, hey, Njo Kaka. I was a small man. By that time, I think they, they knew I was not even a pastor yet. And the guy, one guy told me, Kaka Njo Twende. And Ukona Mungu. And the guy bought me food. Chicken. And you know, chicken from Tito and Day. Is serious chicken. I don't know what that campus do with them. Is serious chicken. Hallelujah. And you know, God spoke something because those things that used to happen early, God used to speak to me. Small things, but God speaks. Hallelujah. And that is the time God spoke to me. Don't chase men. Don't do what? Don't chase men. It was a small thing. God said, don't chase men. Man. Don't chase man. Let me tell you a story that I've never told you another one. I have started ministry. We have equipment that was with the previous pastor, Pastor Frederick Okoko. I know many of you know that story. So Pastor Frederick comes and I speak. And you know that time I was afraid of not having equipment. So we had speakers and then they went. When I became mature, God took them away so that I start well. I thought that having speakers was having God. And I pray, God, do not let me be ashamed. My father, let me see this God. Then God spoke to me. And you know what God tells me? You know what God told me? <laughs> God told me that those speakers that you have will not leave that church until the other speakers. And I told those women that God has said our sound will not leave until there's another one. God is good. Can I tell you something? I'm just using it as an, as an example. Okay? Don't, don't, don't use it as a prayer point. Some people stole money somewhere. Waliba pesa. And when they stole money somewhere, one of them was my relative. And this relative of mine, because me, I don't know what has happened. Me, I'm there. I just get a phone call that somebody is looking for you. Then this man comes, and this man asks me, "What is this? What? What is this thing? This thing of yours is very old. How much is, is it? I'm, I'm just a young Christian by then." Then you know what God, what, what that man did? He buys me a keyboard. God is good. You know that I'm telling you, it's a bad story, but it's 13 years ago. It's a bad story, but you get the lesson. I know the government is here in the front seat. You leave me alone. <laughs> so this guy takes his money. And this guy had uh, something like three million. Then this guy, you know, yeah, okay, leave me. When I, when I realized the gravity of this thing, this guy go and his people come for him. Then his people come for him. On the day that I'm told that uh, they are coming for their sound tomorrow, somebody was cleaning the house. And in a certain corner, they got a paper bag, and it had 500,000. This 500,000, you know what they told me? They called me, and they, they said that they discovered that they are short, and they say, we forgot something in your house. And uh, so and so, please don't disappear with it, because you know I'm just born again a few months. Eh? I can become a terror. If I become a terror, <laughs> I can run away. Hallelujah. Then they say, take so and so amount of money, we are coming for the rest. This one is trouble. But you know, now I can never do that. Because now I'm born again and I'm, I'm stable in my salvation. I can never accept money that I know has come. But there I was a young Christian. So, so that way, this guy gave me 250,000. 
and they take their half and they go and say, God, what am I going to do with this money now? These people know that I'm, I don't have money. Here. Then go and buy speakers and buy. You know, I went and bought speakers and bought an amplifier and bought everything. Then I came to church. Five minutes after that, the pastor that I had the sound, he came with a police land cruiser to collect his sound. He was there five minutes later. You know what God told me? God told me, if you have me, you know the scripture says that, the Bible says that I will give Egypt as a ransom for you, Israel. God said that so long as you maintain me, the love for me, there is nothing that I cannot do for you. You hear that? Eventually, I took that sound and we sold it and we gave that money to charity. We, we took those blind people to the studio, that music, you will see it all over. We gave it out and started life afresh to Kansas Sabila sound. We started without sound. But God spoke to me, when you have your presence, I told you of the time that we had somebody that we needed to help. David picked a woman from town. This David has done things to me that I just forgive him. He gets a woman, Sisi to Konashida, we have problems of our own. Food to eat is a problem. Then he goes and takes a homeless woman in town with two children and comes with them. Man of God, I've gotten this one in town, we can help them. <laughs> Feeding myself is a problem. Then he goes and brings people. Okay. So I told you, you've heard this story before. It was on Friday and I put earphones and I started to pray. God of glory, I'm releasing this woman to go to her place. I'm releasing this woman on Sunday to go to her place. I'm releasing this woman on Sunday. I don't have even bus fare to give her to go to Nyanza, but I'm releasing her on Sunday. Let me tell you, when I dropped those earphones and got outside the church, you know those, the, the paper bags that they use for, for, for rubbish, takataka, the big ones, we found one next to the church full of new shoes. New shoes. A paper bag full. Is there anybody who was there during those days? Is there anybody who was there? Who is that one living? Joyce was there. That one can confirm with that story. Ivo, Ivo. We picked a bag full of new shoes. What do we do? On Sunday, I told her, I said to the, those few people that were in church, and she got fair to go home and start life. The presence of God above everything. I said the presence of God above everything Amen. hallelujah Amen. seek more of god now i just a point or two as we finish hallelujah the presence of god is atmosphere dependent i told you on friday those one here on friday you heard me say that atmosphere the presence of god the spirit of god being in your life is atmosphere dependent say my amen it is what? Hallelujah. So the point that I put here, your first requirement in seeking intimacy with the Holy Spirit is not to call him. The first assignment or requirement is to labor, to make a conducive atmosphere for him to dwell. Uh, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit will come, but if there is no atmosphere to maintain the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will go. God, I want to see you in my finances. Make room, make an atmosphere for God to dwell. Let me just mention a few things. There are things that will chase the Holy Spirit. You know, the things that we listen to when we are at home. The music that you listen to. Can you own that music if you know that Jesus was there physically? Hallelujah. Because some people leave church and when you go home, you go home, the remote goes to a hangler in volume 21. Maxima. You know when you move like this, spirit go. When you move like this, spirit go. At, at the end of the night, you have nightmare and you start accusing me. That man of God is fake. Hallelujah. Can Jesus dance with you that music that you're listening to? Unaskia atmosphere dependent. The TV that you watch, 
Lustful sins are there. You know they are lustful sins. You may not act them out. You may not act them out, but they may provoke something in you. You see that man with the chest, like one who carries stone in a quarry. And you, you feel like you need to blow yourself small. The atmosphere is corrupted. Hallelujah. You see, you see a girl walking, it's maybe a man. A girl is walking on that screen. You, you make sure that nobody is coming. So that you watch it, you finish. <laughs> that atmosphere the Holy Spirit will not be. Let me just teach you the good old gospel. Hallelujah. But work on it. Say, can I, can I watch this thing with Jesus? Can I listen to this with Jesus? This chat that I'm chatting, can I do this with Jesus? If your conscience is not getting stricken, there's a problem. No, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell there. If that chat is not... You, you know, there are times you can be tempted and you chat. But if you don't get into a place you feel guilty after that, there is a problem. There is a, there, you know, no, you may be a prayerful person, the presence of God is not with you. You pray, you pray, you pray. But, you know, we pray well, but at times what stops us is not lacking to pray. What stops us is what we condone. The things that we allow. The friends that we allow. Hallelujah. I've had somebody, somebody came and said that uh, my wife is giving me trouble because my friends are not born again, we are born again. But man of God, I know myself. Mr. I know myself in six months had uh, fallen into fornication, had slept with somebody. And Mr. in six months, Mr. I know myself had drunk alcohol. In six months. Amen? The company that you keep. At times you step, we had friends. The friends that were mtuangu, mtunguyas. We had friends that our people that we needed to break those relationships. As a music producer, celebrities were the least in the list of the of the phone. You a season I changed for a season I changed my number. This one that I have now, I left it for a season in time, a season, a season, then I brought it back because to cut away. They call me, I'm Teja, I'm Teja, I'm Teja, they delete my number. Because my list was these people. And what, what was the relationship? Tei. <laughs> we meet for alcohol, we meet. So you see, once that number is still there, that temptation is still there. There are numbers you need to block for you. You need to delete, to block them, then delete them. So that you've blocked them, they cannot get you and you don't have them to call them. At a temptation, Ikikuja. There are numbers to do that for the sake of the presence of God. We call the Holy Spirit, and we are going to call the Holy Spirit. This one, the prayers that I prayed here, let me tell you, I discovered God has given me something that I had during the olden days. God has given me, I was here with open shoes and a t-shirt until 11 o'clock, praying in this cold, and cold in Akuanga Hapa. But I didn't feel it. I even told my brother David that this date of my marriage, I think something has happened. This day that I had something, you see, this is me. You've not had me complain of cold. I prayed. I prayed and I told, I, I asked God, make this thing be manna, food that has come from heaven. So this one, the Holy Spirit, take the Holy Spirit, but will the Holy Spirit be maintained? The presence that you are able to cultivate. Now, we all start at that point where we are from women, we are from alcohol, we are from adultery, fornication, and ETC. We, that is where I came from. There was day one when I'm born again. You know, me, I, I got born again, and the previous day I had been drinking. So even when I'm born again, I'm born again at, at, at I, I, give my, I gave my life at 4 o'clock in the evening. At 8, 9 o'clock, there was a bar behind me. Rita when I told you, I told you, my sister Rita is here from Void, the one who was singing. You know, I'm born again that day, then I hear that music and you see, you, you, you feel your feet start to tingle a bit. When I hear that music, normally it's to wear shoes and go. So you feel your feet, but I'm born again. There's a place where we all start, but we say, oh, no, I gave my life to Jesus, let me just sleep. On Monday, those young men that used to roll bang in my house, they come with their normal bang. They all bang worth 300 shillings. And it's 13 years ago, bang like this, they come to roll it at my house. He, 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 kindukulu yote. Then I say, no, apana mini mecha ivi, no, you cannot do this one. You cannot do this one in my house again. 
Then after two weeks, it rained. Then I went to my drainage, and I found bang growing in my drainage. I said, Jesus, I'm born again. This thing should not ever happen. Hallelujah. There's a place we start. You purpose, okay? What I say is that you look at the end from where you are. I do what? I look at the end from where I am. And what is the end for me personally? I told people on Friday that my grandfather was the man who was seen as the hope of the village. He left Nyanza and went to Kericho to work. And he was the only person that has ever left the village. And Kericho was the farthest place that everybody, anybody had ever gone. So the hope of the village was him. He retires 1992, squanders his money, then comes with the little money, builds a 28 house Mabati, and that was all. My father was the same potential. Went to Egypt to play basketball. 1970s, when Pele came from Brazil to play, he was among those who were selected to play football with him. 2006, I think, the man retires, we put his luggage on the lorry, we take him back. Potential not realized. So my end at the beginning, I say that I will defy whatever has stopped my father and my grandfather. You hear? I will defy them. Then I told God, I will not serve you. I told God, I will not serve you until I see your presence. And God gave me favor. So that is, I, I look at what I want from where I am. Then you, you meditate on the price to pay. Say, the price to pay. So the price to pay, there is prayer. There is giving, then there is abstinence from what has been making you fall. Okay? There is prayer, there is giving, there is abstinence. What has been making you fall? Amen. Amen. And my journey started that way. These people, they were this reader, they were with another one called scholar. I forgive them. One day. I'm in church with slippers because I've given my shoes. I gave my shoes. I'm in slippers and these people, they tell me you are shaming the people of our community. These are not things to come with to church. But they don't know the price that I was paying. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You see the end from where you are, then determine the price that you need to pay. We are saved by grace, amen. But results that are needed to live a good life, they come by diligent pursuit. We are saved by grace. We are saved by grace. But results, you will not live a careless life and expect to live in prosperity. You will not live a stingy life and expect multiplication of your finances. You will not live a wayward life and expect the spirit of God to be seen as evident in your life. We start from marriage. Then we build it from there. You want peace in your marriage, you're already in marriage. The marriage is not looking for the next, is not going anywhere. Get this prayer. God, I want more of you. Adjust your life. Adjust your life. It will make your marriage life bow to Jesus in Jesus' name. Your business, your finances, the strategy is the same. Look at what you want. I used to tell people that America will come I, I said that my ministry will be a ministry for the nations but I'm not going to be taking an aeroplane go to look for people to preach to they will find me even if I'm in Majengo that is the word that I used to use even if I'm going to preach in Majengo the world will come to witness the power of God when the two, you don't think it comes there by this the price that you need people are sleeping you're walking around like a madman now imagine me here at night outside here and you're speaking in tongues and somebody who does not know you is walking outside there <laughs> somebody is speaking gibberish and you are very serious you're walking it is your destiny you're fighting destiny people i thank god for another thing i really thank god for this woman my wife uh, you know people say you want man of god you want serious man of god my wife, going to bed at the normal time that couples go to bed does not exceed once a week. Two o'clock, two o'clock, 
two, my people here, they know, five o'clock. I've gone home six o'clock. At times I leave this place and go, I give a lift to those, the kids, the juniors going to school. That is a price that we need to pray, to pay. But I thank her, because even if you had Prophet T.B. Joshua last year, the, pre, pre, the wife last year, she presented women that used to help her when they have problem with T.B. Joshua. And one thing that they had a problem with was attention. That this man does not give me attention, but I've not gone through that with this lady. The man of God comes in at 10 o'clock and left the house yesterday. There's a day I left at, left, I left at 2 and came the next day at 4. It takes the grace of God. It takes somebody who has been called for that. There are people here, this beautiful, beautiful one, they would have tortured me by now, finished me by complaining. But but I bless the Lord. Amen. You will have more of God. And you, have res you will have results that show that you have more of God. I thank God for T.B. Joshua because what I saw, I saw miracles. But when I saw miracles, what I knew is that nobody can do miracles exactly like another person. Hallelujah. But you can learn from them. Now, when I saw people with bones being healed, when I saw people with bones being healed, with, with sicknesses in the bones, bones popping out being healed, I sought to listen to this man. More than just admired. He, 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 he has done this. Oh, that, he has done this. No, that, I sought to listen to him. And what I came to discover from T.B. Joshua, all those who want the T.B. Joshua anointing, is that this man focused on having God. You see, everything that happens here is a reality. Some people look at me praying for people, they see results, people rolling, and they say that is of the devil. Eh, they even call Jesus that, so that is not my business. Uh, that is not my business, neither that is my worry. But whatever you see is a product of seeking the presence of God more and more. Am I there yet? No. I've not res somebody has not resurrected in my service. I'm not there yet. Blessed be the name of the Father. I will, I will pray over a phone, somebody in a mortuary. I will pray and they will resurrect there. Amen. You, you are saying amen, you are not a church. Just church me. You think it is easy? I'll pray for somebody in a morgue and they will resurrect. But there's a price to pay. And what is the price? More of God. The price for more of God. Because we are all Christians, but the level of our vision is not the same. The visions that we see when we dream is not the same. Hallelujah. Atmosphere dependent, presence dependent. More of God. Tell your neighbor more of God. More. Tell your neighbor you are eating cake. But maintain the presence. Maintain the presence. Let me, this final line. God honors effort. God does not honor perfection. Have you heard that? I know it sounds funny. God does not, not honor perfection because that perfect person does not exist. That perfect Christian does not exist. That perfect servant of God does not exist. But God honors effort. God honors effort. That is why you're surprised at times prostitutes, people like me, people who are drunkards and DTC, being used for the glory of God. God honors effort. Mungu see at perfection, at your goodness, but effort. When you're trying, God knows that you're trying. When it's heavy on you and you come back, God, is, this thing will kill me if you don't help me. In humility, God honors effort. Mungu huweshimu mtu wanajaribu. Hallelujah. If you just say that, ah, because of this situation, I will live this way, you find yourself living in defeat. But when you are just trying, you are trying and you fail because we don't, attain, we don't have the presence of God to, to the magnitude that we have because of perfection. We try and God knows that we genuinely try. We make a genuine effort. And when we fail, T.B. Joshua used to say, when you fail, don't run from God, run back to God. Say, so, Jehovah, you to me, Mr. Santa Fanyaj. You have still sustained my life. I'm still alive. I'm back here. 
I've failed again. Lord, help me. Then when you leave that place, you try. Because I failed, let me try. And let me tell you, you are not perfect and you'll never be perfect. You may never fall in that area again, but you will fall in another area. You watch yourself, adultery, you keep away from fornication. One day you find yourself lying like Satan. You have given a lie, you feel like a tail wants to grow. You feel like you're becoming Satan. You lie. You still go back to Jesus. Tell Jesus, don't just go, okay? But when it comes to your heart that you have offended him, go back to him. He will wipe you. He will wipe you. Let me tell you, the greatest people that we know are people who are able to rise above their mistakes. You have the great, those who have the greatest presence of God. End up, Pole Pole, talk to them. Talk to them. Pole, go and talk to them. Those who have the presence of God. Catherine Kuhlman, nobody had greater presence. You know, we pray for people and we lay hands. Catherine Kuhlman used to stand on the altar and say that God is healing a heart condition there. And somebody will feel heat in, in your heart. You had sickness and you get healed that way. Catherine Kuhlman used to preach and finish the first miracle that she experienced she just preached and she finished and somebody who was going home who had a problem with the eyes they discovered that they're driving and they can see the yellow lines on the road without being prayed for she carried the presence but you know she made a bad mistake got married to somebody's husband broke somebody's marriage and was in that condition for about six years then six years she she broke away with the man on the eighth year she goes back to god Lord, I need Catherine to die that you may arise. She calls it a dead end. Catherine needs to die. And she said that she died a thousand deaths, not one death, a thousand deaths. But when she comes, she said, don't offend the Holy Spirit, my friend. I am nothing without him. And the miracles start to happen. And they say people used to sit down and you look at your watch, you discover you've been sitting down for five hours. And you just feel like you just come in. A command for the atmosphere. Command for the... Leave alone anointing. Nisha be anointing in a presence in Have I ever told you presence and anointing is different? Anointing is a gift. Where a man of God can operate and deliver people because they have that gift. But the Bible says, you pro we prophesied in your name. We heal the sick in your name. And the Lord will say, go away from me, you sinners. I never knew you. Don't judge relationship by power, by anointing. Here, I lay hands on you, I call fire. No, but it's the tangibility, the presence of God, that does not operate in somebody, a rebellious person. A rebellious person, you make mistakes while you know, and you keep on making those mistakes. That is a rebellious person. Okay? But there's a person who, transgression and rebellion are different. Transgression, this is a mistake, you learn your mistake, you come back. Rebellion, a rebellion, you do it, you sleep with, so long as the pastor has not caught you, so long as you've not been caught, even if you're a pastor, you continue to do it, that is rebellion. You may operate in a gift. You may operate in a gift. Don't think that everybody that prays for people to get healed is not that, that they don't sleep with women. That is anointing, that is a gift. And God says that on the final day, that gift will not count. But what we want is the presence. Ikilena Fundisha Leo is carrying the presence. Where a bad person, a stingy man comes to your business, but because of the presence of God that you carry, they say, give me that one. The presence that you carry, give me that one. The presence that you carry, yani unakani kama unawaibia, because of the presence that you have. <laughs> you sell like you're stealing from them. They cannot resist you. You present papers and they don't have money. They look for money to satisfy you. Something in them cannot resist you. That is the presence of God. Because the presence of God holds people like ransom. They command them to, to make your life successful. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, what a beautiful thing to have. The presence of God. What a beautiful thing to have. The presence of God. The presence of God. Some of the presence of God. The presence of God. Hallelujah. People have revelation in this generation. And I pray that our country, Kenya, and this generation gets out of that place of honoring people simply by anointing.
the anointing that you see. There are people who know to manipulate and use the anointing. But tell you, let me tell you, there's something called difference. The presence of God. The presence of God is where you can come to this altar so sick by yourself. And you say, I sleep here and you wake up healed without me being involved. That is the presence of God in a ministry. You can come and sit there and you pray for yourself and you get healed. You come here and you pray on this altar and you get a business idea. Those things happen when people have the presence of God. Not anointing. Presence of God. People mistake anointing and presence. <laughs> anointing is like playing the guitar. This, the guitarist, the, he can pray very well. Na mekua mipiga kwa guitar. Na mepiga kwa bar. They may play bar at night and come and pray very well. So anointing, once God has given it to you, but we know that and I know that. So what I seek is the presence of God. Where you can say, you can send a message to my phone and even before I respond, you send another message with a testimony. That is the presence of God. The presence of God, you are in Nairobi and there's some, people want to attack your people at home. Rain will fall for your sake. You don't even know, but rain will fall for your sake. We want the presence of God. Servants of God, hallelujah. Philip disappears. He appears next to, to, to that Ethiopian man. Hey, what are you reading? This is what I'm reading, but I don't understand. That man was a serious man in government. And Philip preaches to this man. And Philip gets this man baptized. Are you sure Philip went away empty-handed? Are you sure he went away empty-handed? But can you appear and dis disappear and appear somewhere? You try now. That is even me on the altar. We need more of God. We need more of the presence of God. The witches are flying with brooms. In the name of Jesus, we can command Jesus and they fall down. But it's good to even fly now. We, we fly small. We need presence. We need presence. When the Bible says that when the ways of a man please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. What happens to your enemy? The Bible says that the Lord appeared to Laban and told Laban, do not touch Jacob. Do not dare to touch him. That is presence. They talk to your enemies and command your enemies to have peace with you. The presence of God. See, Masha. Clap for Jesus. <laughs> Prayer warriors in this ministry, God told me on Friday, those who are here remember, that we are entering another level. God, we thank God for the crowd that we have, but God spoke to us on Friday that we are going to have another level now. So my prayer warriors that are with me, even when you're fasting for three days, God taught me some things hard. One day God told me to, to pray for T.B. Joshua for seven days. To pray for him alone. I think God was teaching me focused prayer by that time. It was not issue about T.B. Joshua. So when I want to pray about food, God bless T.B. Joshua's food in Jesus' name. I want to sleep. God bless T.B. Joshua's. He wants to sleep in Jesus' name. I used to have those prayer points in my wallet. I think the old wallet has those prayer points. I used to pray, God, I pray. What I want, I pray for him. God prosper that man's finances for seven days fasting. So homework, the prayer warriors of this ministry. More of God. You hear somebody was next to a dead boy. Somebody went to pray next to a dead boy for three hours. You know, Gio? Gio, Gio a boy? Redeemed, eh? I honor servants of God, okay? Me, you'll never hear me talk bad about servants. I honor a dead boy and his anointing. Somebody went to pray next to him for three hours. Hallelujah. And that man prayed for mercy for three hours. Mercy, Lord. You look at the success that he had. What is this man praying for mercy for? What has he done? But those who know God, those who truly know God, they know the greatest thing you need is presence. T.B. Joshua, the prayer that you had from me, take more of me, give me more of you. Presence. 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 So we are praying and we are fasting from tomorrow. I charge some people, forget your needs. Pray for presence. Because something beautiful is happening here. 
Something beautiful is happening. I've had people now start to tell me, people in the morning, they say, this is what I dream, and you know what to take care of in that day. Nimeanza kuona watu kama hao hapa. Hallelujah. I charge you. <laughs> you like your church, people are growing. I charge prayer warriors, some people, for the next three days that you are praying, pray for mercy, for more of God. God, more of you. Lord, more of you. Lord, more of you. Lord, more of you. More of you. More of you in Jesus' name. You will discover that you can attain more from God by asking for him than asking for things. I told you I prayed in the cold until 11. You know what I saw? Eh? I saw Sinach and Nathaniel Bassi here. That means my vision is elevated. No more calling village people. <laughs> you know, what is the beauty? What do I mean by that vision? The beauty of it. At times God shows you what he sees when he sees you. It may not be manifesting yet, but he can show you the vision. More of God. The presence of God. Can we pray? Just a simple prayer? Just, today is cake day. We just pray a short, simple prayer. If you want more of God, tell him, God, I want more of you. If this message has gotten to your heart, you know how much you need the presence of God. God, help me. Help me, Lord. If you know you want God, but you know the atmosphere that you're in does not allow the Holy Spirit to be comfortable, help, ask for help. Oh, yes, you need idea. Need idea. People like us have been helped by God. We loved secular music. We loved bad movies. It is God who helped us to stop the pornography, to stop those things. It is God who helped us. Ask God, I need you. The desire for alcohol, it is God who helped replace it with the desire for the spirit. God is not a respecter of persons. God is not a respect of persons. Anybody that seeks him diligently from their heart, God will fill you. God will fill you. God will fill you. If your business needs more of God, your marriage life needs more of God, your finances need more of God. Your destiny needs more of God. Just talk to him. Tell him. That is time for heart prayer. If everything depends on the presence that I carry, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Lord, I want more of you, even as your servant. I desire more of you. I want your presence, Lord, to bring me the right people. I want your people to bring the people who will buy the land, people who will build the ministry. I want your presence, Lord, to raise the dead so that people will come and get born again. But it is your presence that I need my father. I am a mortal man, a mortal being, flesh Lord, most imperfect of flesh, my father. Most imperfect of flesh is Jehovah. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Give me more of you Lord. I know greater results are waiting for me but they are dependent on your presence that I carry. Greater results are waiting for me. I know you're willing, Lord. You're willing to come more in greater measure. My Father, I know your presence is atmosphere deep. Oh, help me, Lord, to have an atmosphere where you're willing to walk in this ministry to touch the lives of my people, Lord. To touch the lives of my people, to transform them, my Father. More of you, Lord. Help me, Lord. I'm desperately in need of you. I know wisdom is a perfect ignorance. Strength is 
perfect weakness, Lord. I know. Akili yangu ni upumbavu. Sijui mwaminifu. Nguvu sina, I'm not strong, Lord. In any way, any man, I'm not strong. I need you, Lord. More of you. Oh Lord, none is like unto you. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, I know, Lord. There is more out there, my Father. There is more that we can receive, my Father. Talk to God for one more minute. Just talk to God for one more minute. I am desperately thirsty. I'm desperately thirsty for of Him. I'm desperately thirsty, Lord. We are thirsty for more of you, Lord. For more of you. For more of you, Lord. Jesus. Just raise your hand. Say, Lord Jesus, more of you. Help me to make my life conducive for you. Let my business attract your presence. Let my finances attract your presence. Let my marital life attract your presence. But I am weak, O oh Lord. By my strength I cannot. 
I need your help. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me honor Jesus. Help me honor the sacrifice of Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus.